Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing nicotine and the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing uh, why it is uh, that nicotine ca cannot act as an agonist at the uh, skeletal muscle form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, and to do that we need to discuss how it is that acetylcholine binds uh, to uh, the acetylcholine binding site within these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so I have told you about what it means for a um, chemical structure to be aromatic. It means that it has these delocalized electron rings or pi orbitals. So let me give you an example of some uh, aromatic amino acids. So major examples are tryptophan, tyrosine, and phenylalanine. Let me show you the structures of these. So tryptophan, we'll start off with tryptophan, the most difficult one. So here is um, the, um, the typical amino acid structure that's common to all amino acids. So we've got the alpha carbon with the amino group and the carboxylic acid group down here. And then the R group of tryptophan, you have a methylene group, and then you have a structure known as an indole ring. Okay, and let me explain to you what an indole ring is. But before we can explain what an indole ring is, I need to explain what a pyrrole ring is. So firstly, let me start with what a pyrrole ring is. So if I start by drawing the um, skeletal structure of a pyrrole ring, because it's just quicker. So in a skeletal structure, you don't actually draw carbon atoms, and you don't draw the hydrogens coming off carbon atoms. So the pyrrole ring is a five-membered ring where four of the members, this one, this one, this one, this one, are carbons, and then the fifth member here is a nitrogen. Okay, so you have these four carbons here, a nitrogen here, you have a double bond there and a double bond there, okay, and you also have a hydrogen off the nitrogen, which you have to show. Now, the carbons are implicit, so you implicitly have a carbon here, a carbon here, carbon here, a carbon here. Now, the astute ones amongst you will notice that these carbons here don't have enough bonds. They only have three each, and carbon needs four bonds. It's then implicitly assumed that if I don't ex explain uh, why this carbon doesn't have four bonds, I, I don't show you the, another bond, it's assumed that you make up the rest of the bonds by adding hydrogens on. So there's a hydrogen of each one of these carbons that isn't shown. Okay, so that's the pyrrole ring here. Okay, and now let me show you the structure of the indole ring. Okay, so the indole ring is the pyrrole ring with another ring added onto it, another benzene ring added onto it. Okay, so we'll start off by redrawing our pyrrole ring here. Okay, there we go. Whoops. And then we're going to stick a benzene ring off the side of this, which is a six-membered ring. And I, remember, I need to put the double bond there and there. And then the benzene ring, it's already got this double bond here, but then it also have a double bond here, like so, and then I'll have to put the hydrogen off the nitrogen. Now, again, we draw the structure as though it's alternating double and single bonds, and you have loads of these alternating double and single bonds. The truth, the actual truth of this structure is rather more complicated. These additional bonds here, they won't be really associated with that bond. Uh, they won't actually be sitting in between these two. Instead, what will happen is the electrons here will be put into delocalized electron rings above and below uh, the plane of this indole ring. So this indole ring does indeed have an aromatic structure. Okay, we'll now put that on the side of our amino acid, and we're now going to have to draw it in molecular form, because it will look rather strange if I just stick a skeletal structure on a structure that was previously molecular. So let's draw it atom by atom now. So carbon, carbon, here's another carbon, here's another carbon, here's the nitrogen bound to that carbon. So that's the pyrrole ring, this portion here. And now let's stick this benzene ring on the side. Okay. Oh, and I should have said something when I was discussing the aromaticity of benzene. These delocalized rings are why often people will draw benzene rings like so. They'll draw a hexagon, and then they'll just put a circle in the middle to show benzene, and the circle is denoting the delocalized ring of electrons. 
Okay, so onwards with our indoor ring here. So let's just add hydrogens everywhere that needs to have a hydrogen added. So here, here, and here. So this is the structure of the amino acid tryptophan. Tryptophan. Okay, right. And tryptophan is also often abbreviated by TRP for short, is its um, three-letter amino acid code, and its single-letter amino acid code is W. Okay. Right, now let's discuss some more aroma uh, aromatic amino acid residues that you find uh, lining this um, binding site uh, for acetylcholine in the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So again, let's start off with the core amino acid structure. So here's the amino group. Here's the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it. And here's the carboxylic acid group down here. Okay, now let's do the amino acid tyrosine next. So the amino acid tyrosine, you have a methylene group, and then you have a benzene ring, which I'll denote just simply by drawing a hexagon with a circle through it, which is often done um, in even in molecular uh, structures like so. Okay, and then we have an alcohol group off the side. So this is the amino acid tyrosine, okay, which has three letter code T R Y R and single letter code just Y. Okay, and then the final uh, aromatic amino acid that's important in these, uh, well, firstly, let me just discuss why tyrosine is an aromatic amino acid. Well, it's pretty obvious. It's got the benzene ring, which has these delocalized electrons. Okay, the final amino acid, which is uh, an aromatic amino acid and is incorporated uh, in the walls of these acetylcholine binding sites is the amino acid phenylalanine. Okay, so here's the amino acid structure, the core amino acid structure, and then the R group, you'll have a methylene group and then a benzene ring here. Okay, and that is the structure of phenylalanine. Okay, which is often just abbreviated to PHE, phi, like so, or also, it's abbreviated, its single letter amino acid code is F. So this is its uh, three letter amino acid code, this is its full name, and this is its single letter amino acid code. Right, so all of these amino acids have aromatic structures. They have these delocalized rings. Now, why is this important? Well, basically, there is an interaction known as cation pi interactions. Okay, and I think I better show this on this drawing up here that I had. So basically, we have these delocalized electron rings above and below aromatic structures. They are full with electrons. So what sort of a charge do they have? They have a negative charge. Okay, so these delocalized rings serve as um, centers of negative charge in molecules. So if you had a positively charged species known as a cation, so cation is just the name for a chemical species which has a positive charge. Now I'm drawing it as though it actually is an ion, but of uh, well, I'm drawing it as though it's a single atom ion, i.e. maybe a sodium ion or something, but it could in fact be any molecule with a positive charge. Then that will interact very nicely with these delocalized electron rings which have a negative charge. And this attraction between the negative charge of the delocalized ring and a cation is known as a cation pi interaction. Now, let me show you the structure of acetylcholine, and then I can show you that it's a cation, basically. So, can we squash this in down here? I think we, um, you know, we'll get another piece of paper. Okay, right. So, acetylcholine structure then. Acetylcholine. It's basically an acetic acid molecule esterified with the alcohol group of choline. So let me show you this. So here is the acetyl group. So here's uh, an ethanoic acid. That's the modern name for acetic acid. Uh, so acetic acid is the old biochemist name, and it's still very pervasive in biochemistry. But the modern chemist name is just ethanoic acid, and it's the acid which is in vinegar. Okay, so acetyl group basically means acetic acid is stirified to something, or it could be linked by other means, i.e. by uh, an amide link, for instance. 
uh, but in this case it is an ester link, to the alcohol group of the choline molecule. So here comes choline. Choline has an alcohol group here, and then an ethyl group after that. So here's this two carbon structure. And then on the end, it has a nitrogen, which has three methyl groups coming off it, like so. And this nitrogen has a positive charge. So this means that the whole molecule, the acetylcholine molecule, which is what this is, this is the acetyl, this is the choline here, um, the whole molecule has this positive charge. So acetylcholine is a cation, basically. So this is how acetylcholine binds in the acetylcholine binding site on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Basically, the positive charge of the acetylcholine molecule forms cation pi interactions with these aromatic residues, uh, which are in the aromatic nest of the acetylcholine binding site. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.